Katine Art Awards uh, for the last has established the reputation as one of the leading um, uh, art programs, competitions uh, that gives recognition to young artists. We're entering a new decade, another decade, and um, I think uh, what we have uh, shortlisted this year is again another exciting list of young artists. I'm working on the theme of the future. It made sense because of the imagery that we, we like to use in our individual practices. And um, it was also a common interest. The theme was as general as using the idea of the future to present ideas that are sort of cyclical in nature. We also chose the title in the year 2000 because I believe for all of us who are already conscious of the turn of the millennium, the year 2000 was a powerful number. It held promises of the future, and yet after the year 2000, we're not yet as advanced as we thought we would be back in 1985. So our concepts revolved around that. The whole show is basically inspired by microscopic images of cells, parasites, and other small details that you know we can't see with our naked eye, but are in our daily surroundings. I'm always attracted to strange and beautiful details. That's why I guess choosing this as the theme or the subject for my show came in naturally. I used to work in a shop where we sold an old microscope, so we used to just put everything in the slide. We prick our fingers, we, we catch mosquitoes, and just put it in there to, to see it under the lens. For me, it's a whole new universe down there, and that's, that's basically what Pocket Universe is. The title of the show is uh, Measuring Distance. The show is about the idea of uh, displacement and isolation, contextualized in distorted grids as a form of structure. The works also talk about the idea of uh, existential dimensions of memory, time, and space. I wanted the works to talk about painting as a subject. I wanted to tackle it in two ways. Um, the first one is being the process of the painting. It's actual putting paint on the surface and eventually erasing the paint. I wanted this because I wanted two opposing ideas, um, in this case, order and chaos, to exist on a singular space. Secondly, I wanted the physical work of a painting to see how it reacts and interacts with us with its surrounding space. I am Derek Tumala and I'm presenting my work, uh, Sacred Geometry. As we know, the sacred geometry is a study of how nature is drawing shapes. I was trying to create an object that would represent an intangible object. The sculptures are made of plaster and wood, and then I applied video on it. So this is like a mixture of video and the sculpture. And then what I'm trying to make is uh, to transform video as a form of light. So it became transformative, where the intangible become tangible. Yeah, so the show is called The Collection of Jane Ryan and William Saunders, and it's a project that uh, looks at the collection of Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos. So we see Jane Ryan and William Saunders. We all know it's as the alter ego they use to, I guess, divert public funds to their private wealth. Since 2011, I've kind of been gathering anecdotes, sort of small documents, catalogues pertaining to the cultural legacy of Vimelda and, and Ferdinand. And the first first thing that I, I encountered was an, was an auction catalogue of the magnificent silver auction that took place in 1991. At that time, it was the largest auction of Georgian and Regency era silverware from a single collection. A lot of these were stored at the Goldenberg Mansion next to Malacanang. 
They were taken shortly after the couple fled for Honolulu. From a visual artist's point of view, this was my interest, the way that these objects that were produced for a different context, a different history, suddenly became almost complicit with another history, how unexpected histories are intertwined. This is part of my early exercises where I construct landscapes. This is where I learn to see the bigger picture. It's like finding the vanishing point because when you construct landscape, you employ a technique wherein you have to shift your perspective, you have to find the horizon. Basically organizing because nature is too overwhelming and of course the world around us is difficult to comprehend. So construction of landscape is, it is ultimately very personal and philosophically speaking, finding my own self. Where am I in this grand landscape? I'm also finding myself in the context of a bigger community. And the vanishing point is a point where parallel lines meet. It's an illusion. It's where you meet, and that's the finding of the self. When you get there, you realize that there is no vanishing point, and as you reach it, it goes farther and farther. Um, many of them are really quite thought-provoking and highly original. I think this is, um, this works as a challenge really for the judges to find who's stuck. Um, I think they're very interesting. Uh, they're quite varied in, um, in practices. And I think at now there was a certain portion of it who, who were very, very um, sophisticated in their notions of what the development of their art. And they knew very well how to explain it. I don't know where to start because we can always start at the future and we can always also start at the past and the present. I am here right now and you're also here right now because of this present realization. If you look at the past, the past is always distorted. It's fragmented. The future is always been desired. We always experience this thing which is the always looking forward. That's the uh, process of this whole thing, this time. It's just one-way illusion, the moving forward, but we can always go back mentally to the past and connect it to this, to uh, feel this incompleteness, this void. We shouldn't let words limit the uh, possibilities. I mean, we should go more beyond than words. I mean, we should overcome it. I was reading this article about how surveyors used to try to make sense of vast spaces, particularly like Antarctica. I started to look into aerial photography and how they switched from before aerial photography came about and onto aerial photography to be able to make sense of the landscape and the challenges that, that they encountered, that there are no like particular landmarks. So for this show, flip things over and unearth a particular process towards the paintings that I usually do. I don't know if you know about the Demax map, so it's like the fuller map where it actually shows. Instead of us being separated by continents, we're actually connected by water, you know, so there's no like north, south, east, west, it's in and out. So I sort of like started to look at that and kind of use it as a way to kind of understand the world around us, I guess. Kind of central to, to the series and, and to my practice in general is the concept of uh, exposure. So I'm looking at photography as a, as a language and I'm interested in how to extend that language to express things which are impossible to express in any other way. Um, and seriality, the reason I use series is because the ideas which are being expressed are quite subtle, they're not kind of a, a narrative or a, an argument. Seriality is kind of a method for me to like parse out those ideas and to see, because if you look at different images next to each other, 
you can start to see a similarity between them. And even though you can't express in words what that similarity is, in that kind of active visual thinking and visual seeing, you can see a similarity and you can kind of recognize that there's something going on. That's looking at seriality from the act of making the art, but it can also be from the act of viewing. If you see one image and you're not quite sure what's going on in there, but then you put three or four next to each other and you start to see, oh, there may be a, a complex amount of meaning in there, but if that same meaning is, is present in three or four of them, you just, oh, that's what he's trying to say, and that's what's going on, and it, it becomes a, a way to access. The group show is actually called Don't You Know Who I Am? Art After Identity Politics. It's something that I've been working on for around seven years now. I first started to develop the brick paintings in 2008 while I was a student in Goldsmiths. It's one work composed of many pieces. Sometimes, well, because of what they are, because they're, they're paintings, I think it's difficult to see them as more installative. So that's why, you know, every time I have um, an opportunity to show together, I do, and then it's, it's, it's installed like on the floor and in, in a way that highlights um, its, you know, more sculptural, more architectural qualities. Early on, when I was still working on them in 2008, 2009, I was really thinking of them like as, you know, as painting. And then as I got to know them a little bit more, I soon realized that they have a very particular, like, unique place in in my practice. So I started to develop them as a kind of armature. Parang I'm making a kind of mental house to like house the rest of the practice so that you know, the other works, you know, the videos and the sculptures that I make also run along and have a particular relationship with the big paintings. This is actually a personal journey, personal odyssey, personal perspective. I have this fascination of looking at cultures, being able to immerse myself in different kinds of perspectives and cultures of countries, of ideologies. I had this series of trips around Asia. I went to this park. I was walking there. I felt like a bit familiar and at the same time displaced. I saw a lot of Filipinos and it saddened me because you would want a different perspective of a country, of a culture. But every time you see a place, you see a Filipino, you see a struggle, their journey, and where do they want that journey to go. So this resulted to that, this series of works. Tak is about diaspora, Tak is about being displaced in a culture, being colonized and being a colonizer. Each of these maps is actually an enclosed utopia of what I wanted to see as a Filipino artist, or just being a human being, traveling around and having my own journey. Very diverse work. Um, interestingly enough, um, they are very contemporary due to the um, the inter or multidisciplinary nature of the uh, the mediums that um, the uh, the applicants um, were involved in. So um, I, I I think uh, because of that strong kind of um, connection to contemporary visual arts practice. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a very strong kind of uh, list of applicants. Contemplation leads to action, to praxis, and then the cycle continues from creativity to subversion to contemplation. These recent festivals are reminders that our postmodern condition tolerates having different underlying ideological views in the same creative sphere. Our Filipino identity has been and is largely shaped by propaganda. The dissemination of ideas and the weaving of myths never ended in our history. Up to the present, especially in the nearing of the 2016 elections, our consciousness is consistently molded by texts campaign material as propaganda. The idea of history is not merely chronicling, but also chasing these futures that one can still possibly utilize. Already realized propaganda is a dead end, meaning there is no future after that. Meaning let these futures exist even as manifestos and images bound in time. As we look at this critical moment in art history, one may ask, 
How are we to reappraise the once thrillingly foreign and radical idea of the modern? This idea, in its moment, after all, are suggested by the appellation, the brave modern.